Well, hello folks, this is Jamil Swift for Gunstock Reviews. I'm here in Phoenix, Arizona, the offices of Tim Forshee. How are you doing, Tim? Great, Jamil. How are you doing, buddy? Good to see you again. Tim, Tim is, of course, is, uh, uh, I will say, his preference in your law business is firearms. Firearms law definitely is the link to my, to my firm, yes, sir. And today, I got a question for you. What the heck is the castle doctrine? Do I need to build a moat and throw alligators around my house? Never a bad idea to have an alligator-filled moat, that's for sure. That definitely I, dissuades salesmen. So. Oh, okay, okay, great. Um, well, the, the term castle doctrine, of course, flexes back to the old English adage that you've all heard a million times, a man's home is his castle. And ladies, I assume that, that would apply to ladies as well, especially these days. Um, and the theory being is that, if you, I think if you ask most people, what's the castle doctrine mean? The answer that I most typically get is, if somebody breaks into my house, I can shoot them. And my response to that is, no, you can't. That is something that is, it, there's a lot of misinformation out there about the Castle Doctrine. And the example that I always use is sort of a weird example, but it's, it's, it's actually possible. Uh, I'm watching a football game on an autumn day. My front door is open. My screen door is closed, but not latched. It's halftime. I walk around the corner to use the restroom. Just as I sit down and start reading my latest issue, Guns and Ammo Magazine, my doorbell rings. And I'm like, this never fails. It's just unbelievable, the timing. And I ignore it. I'm just going to ignore it. And the doorbell continues to ring. Ding dong, ding dong. Finally, I get up. I walk around the corner. And what do I see in my front living room? I see a nine-year-old Girl Scout in her full Girl Scout regalia holding some Thin Mint cookies standing six feet inside my living room. And she says, hey, mister, want to buy some cookies? Well, according to the Castle Doctrine, the way most people seem to interpret it, I could blow her head off. She's broken into my home. Um, she's nine. She has no discretion. She pushed the door, saw it was open, so she walked in. Heck, maybe she'll get a merit badge because some little old lady fell and broke her hip. Well, how do we know? So she doesn't have discretion. She walks into my house. That is a legal breaking and entering. That is somebody entering my home without my permission. People think breaking and entering requires a splintered lock or a broken door jam. Not at all. It's someone entering your house without invitation. So that would be a, a legal breaking and entering, and that is not my permission to blow her head off. It is not a hunting license. That's absurd. There, it's very, very simple. It's a difficult uh, uh, rule to, to put into practice sometimes, but it's very simple to understand. You can only use lethal force when you are reasonably in fear for the imminent loss of human life. And there's nothing about a Girl Scout selling Girl Scout cookies that places me in fear for my life, other than my elevated cholesterol level, but that's, still, that's probably not quite immediate. So that's an example of where somebody breaks in your house, you have absolutely no legal decision or legal ability to shoot them. What the law actually says is, there's a preferential judgment that's given you. In other words, we would assume that somebody whose house has been broken into is in fear for their life. It is a presumption. It is what we call in the law a rebuttable presumption. And it's much more easily rebutted than you think. So I always tell people, don't worry about whether somebody is inside your house or outside of your house. The only issue is, are you reasonably in fear for your life? If so, do what you have to do. If not, why are you even asking me this question? Tim, that's a great answer. Those are things I never thought about. Then again, it's true. Them Girl Scout cookies are bad for your health. They can get you. I know. Yours with Thin Mints. I'm with the little peanut butter thingies. And <laughs> yeah, the, or the, the s'mores ones are, yeah, yeah. are deadly. Yep. Okay? And they're more expensive. Why? What the heck is that? Times are changing. How, I mean, they used to be like two bucks. <laughs> it was like $5 for a box. Girl, go away. In, in the states where marijuana is now legal, you find that they, they stand right outside of the dispensaries. What a brilliant marketing strategy <laughs> that, that is to sell cookies. That's, huh? that's, yeah, because <laughs> them, them munchies can be dangerous. But you know what? This, is, this information is great. You know, we're both responsible gun owners. I sure hope so. Yeah, and we try to keep it that way. And we mm -hmm. want, that's why we're doing this series so you guys can get more knowledge when you make that decision to carry a firearm. Amen. So, guys, like always, please remain healthy, stay safe, and have fun at the range. Thank you for watching Gunstock Reviews. Please visit our website at www.gunstockreviews.com for more exclusive content. Please visit our patron page at www.patreon.com slash gunstockreviews. Your contributions would be greatly appreciated and help us grow our selections and frequency of videos.